everybody. Thanks for joining us. I'm Sharon Zambito of Sugar Ed Productions. And I'm Dominic Palazzolo with MakeYourOwnMolds.com. We've come together today to share with you this beautiful cake that we've created using Dominic's new line of Fleur de Lis border molds. And Sharon's going to show you an amazing technique for two-tone painting and also a quick and easy way to jazz up your pre-made flowers. So we've got a great tutorial to share with you today. Let's get started. I'm really excited to show you my new mold. We call this a fleur-de-lis mold with a trimming blade. And Sharon is going to help me. Yes. Okay, great. And um, what, let, me, let me just explain some of the really cool things about the mold. Yeah. What's okay. different about these molds than the other ones we've seen? Well, when I was using molds and I watch other people use molds, what they do is they take their fondant and they have to pack it in little pieces. And they have to get it all in the perimeter. And then they take it out of the mold and then they've got to trim it with an X-Acto knife. And it takes a heck of a long time time. So what I did was I created, if you notice around the opening of this mold, there's actually a silicone blade. And if we put fondant over this mold and we just roll it lightly, believe it or not, that blade that will not cut my skin or yours mm -hmm. will actually cut right through the fondant or gum paste. Give you a really clean edge. You want to see how that works? Yes, I do. I'm cool. excited to see it. Okay, so whenever you use a mold, you want to put some cornstarch inside, All right. okay? Now, not shortening, because sometimes I hear you know I don't I hear know where somebody if came. they should use shortening in there, but it should always be cornstarch. You no, know, everybody has their theories, but putting sh shortening in this mold makes no sense because shortening, like you know, you use it as a glue on cakes to hold things. So it's going to make it stick even more. Well, it's going to take. It's going to hold the object in your mold. Who wants that? We want it to come out. So did you notice how I knocked out the corn? So you're getting starch? all the little extra pieces out. We want a one molecule thick coating on the inside. You should never have any of those depressions filled with cornstarch. You don't starch. want to fill the details of the mold with cornstarch. So it looks just like that. Okay. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm going now, could to could you also use powdered sugar? Because I know some people prefer powdered sugar as opposed to cornstarch when they're working with fondant. Would that be work as well as cornstarch in the molds? That's a great question. I'm not a fan of powdered sugar. Okay. Because powdered sugar is basically sugar. And so you have moisture from your fondant coming in contact with the sugar. What happens to sugar when it's it, gonna melt and get sticky. It's gonna become a syrup right? And the syrup is sticky. And again, it's going to fight you. Okay. So, so cornstarch all the way. I really do. I, I just think that that's probably the best detackifying agent that you should Personally, use. I love cornstarch and yes. use it liberally in all my cake decorating. So no problem there with me. Now, love it. What I'm doing is I'm just rolling out this fondant. And you know, Fondant is made to actually, you know, for rolling out and covering cakes, and it has a moisture to it and an elasticity and a softness that makes it perfect for that function. But when we're going to mold fondant, we would like to put, put perhaps some, knead in some powdered sugar, or as you've shown me, tylose, which I think that works really, really nice. It, it adds a structure to the fondant that I think really, really helps uh, so that it and molds well. I've got a little bit well. of powdered, powdered tylose here just to show mm -hmm. everybody. It's just a little powder that comes in a container. It's very cool. It's one of the ingredients that's used when you make gum paste from scratch. And it's some, some kind of gum that causes a chemical reaction that causes the fondant or the gum paste to get stiffer, less, less elastic, hardened up, and then over time your gum paste flowers or your gum paste pieces will get very firm and very hard. And if you're going to knead it in, you just take a teaspoon or a little dab, we don't really measure, and just knead it in dry into your fondant and just keep kneading until it's all incorporated and then roll it out and you're ready to go. Because it activates within just a couple of minutes of you putting it in the fondant. Is there anything you don't know? I'm sure there is. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure there is. Okay, so back. What I don't know, you'll teach me. <laughs> yes, and vice versa. So what, here's one of the important things that I want to show about the mold, and, and hopefully the camera can get nice and close up, okay? A lot of people, when they, when they first use my molds, they think that the cavity or the depth of the mold 
that this is the top. It's to the top of the blade. And you know what? The blade, really, you should consider it sitting on top of the cavity or the mold, okay? And as a separate, not a separate piece, but something you don't want to fill to, you should be filling to the base of the blade, which we can see that. There's it's almost actually like a, a little line, line in yes. there that you can see. That's so you about wanna, halfway down the side. You want to roll your fondant or gum paste so that it comes up to that line and not to the top not of the blade. Not all the way to the top of the blade. Because then what's going to happen is, is that you're going, the mold's going to work, but you're taking something out that's a little too thick. Instead of looking like a cake decoration, it looks like a biscuit. <laughs> and, you know, you start to lose some sophistication and some artfulness to your designs if you make them too thick. Right. I mean, you know, in a competition, right. they, they were take looking off. for as thin as possible. Exactly. So, okay. So, I feel like I have sheeted this to the, to the right thickness. Can you guess about how thick that is to let our um, viewers you know? You know what? It depends on the design oh, each itself. Mold is different. Right. So, what you do is just look at that line, and what you can do is cut off a little bit. And put and it in there to see. There, there you go. See so a little bit of trial and error with each, with, each, with, yeah. with each mold. So now what you do is you just take the fondant and put it over the top of the mold, okay? And sometimes, you know, especially in these lights, it's kind of warm. And down and here where we skin. live, it's very humid. Oh, yes, yes. I'm learning that. And so, you know, you put a little bit of cornstarch so on that your you don't stick palm. to the fondant exactly. and pull it up when you're pushing down but what you want to do is you really want to push down hard so that you can get the details that I designed into this mold okay okay now the next thing is is that people tend to take this rolling pin now I'm using just a PVC pipe to make my point that you don't have to press hard really what it is is just short quick strokes now you can see how it's cutting. The blade is doing the work, Just, not the pressure. Exactly. You don't have to do this. Right. Which is going to distort the mold and it's not going to give you as good of a, a border. But you can see that I'm just going fast back and forth with these strokes. And look, look how nice. Very clean cuts on the edge. It cuts right through it. Okay. Now once again, I'm going to just make sure that I've copied all of the details. Okay, now, a secondary function of this blade that I didn't even realize when I first designed it, mm -hmm. but I discovered this, is that, you know when you take something like fondant out of a regular mold, you've got to go around and trim the yeah, edges. Yeah, any little jaggedy edges. You know, they, get, they call that flashing, sugar flashing. Well, in order to save more time, <clears throat> we can put our finger on the side of the blade, the outside of the blade, and we can push it in. Oh, and that takes care of it right there. It puts kind of a radius edge on your piece. Now, you want to do it with some pressure. You want to try that? Yeah. Go ahead and really, yeah, just, and don't baby it. Really push it. And what it does is it just finishes the edge very, very quickly. And then when you take this out, you're not going to have to trim anything. Oh, that's great. And so, you know, it saves a lot of time. And right. uh, I discovered on. that as a secondary you Well, know, that's what we call a happy this. accident. Yeah. <laughs> added benefit that you didn't plan on. Okay, so let's, let's hold that up so that they can see what that looks like after we pushed all the... You pushed all the excess mm -hmm. towards the back. Right. So now it's going to be on the back, and when you unmold it, your edges will be perfectly clean and you don't have to trim. Love that. Love it. Now, you might notice, what are these little islands here? Well, what we're doing is, at the same time we're cutting the perimeter, we're cutting windows. That's the okay. little holes in the floor That's going to be openings in the cake border, so you have an opportunity to use other colors to shine through that window. This can be one color, and the coating on your cake can be another, and that'll come through these windows. So you just take a needle tool... And you just, just pop, pop out the little plug of fondant or gum paste that's going to be in here. And then just like we cleaned up the edges on the outside, what we do is we just twirl these a little bit. See that? And it opens that up so our just windows the same are going thing. to be clean. Okay, now, now we're ready, okay? One of the things that I designed into this mold is a lip. Mm -hmm. Instead of just having a flat, hard rubber edge, you can grab this lip and, and you can grab on the other side and watch what happens when I do that. You see how the mold elongates? And it's just pulling away from the fondant. 
Exactly. That is just going to make the piece inside want to release. And then what I'll do is I'll take my left hand, because I'm right-handed, and I'll put it underneath, and I'll grab the lip, and I'll pull, I'll pull the lip down while pushing up from the bottom. See that? I'll pull it down and push up. You want to try that? Pull it and then just pull it. That's it's just it. It's basically it's, doing the work for you. It's common sense, you know? And so you just go around, and you can tell that's going to come right out, right? Yeah, it's, it's getting ready to fall out. And bam. Wow. There it is. Just a beautiful border. And that's gorgeous. And you can see all mm -hmm. the little minute detail around the floor de lis and the jacks down here. Yeah, we have a micro string of pearls bordering every floor de lis. Plus, the distance from this edge to this edge is 2 pi. That's 6.28 inches long. You know what that means? Any even diametered cake, like a 6, an 8, a 10, a 12, when you start putting this around the bottom, it will meet up It will up always perfectly. match up perfectly around the back. Like, That's a big advantage mm -hmm. because a lot of molds that we use, you start at the front, when you right. get around to the back, it never matches and you always just have a little seam in the back or put a flower there or turn yeah, it to the back because it doesn't match up. And, and let me show you. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take one side of this and let's simulate that they're coming together. Pretend right? that it went all the way around and exactly. you're at the back. Do you see how they that fit comes together? They perfectly so it looks seamless. You don't yes, see the seam. Yes, we designed it so it'll just seamlessly go right back together perfectly. So That's there beautiful. is no beginning or end to the cake border. That's great. But we can take an additional step. And this is what you did on your cake. Yes. Right? Okay, so what we're going to do is... What if we wanted to make, well, you can pose the question, right? <laughs> What if we wanted... Dominic, I really want it to be two-tone. <laughs> yes. okay. I want my floor to lead to be, and my jacks to be one color, yes. but I want the background of the lace to be another color. That we would be do fabulous. That. Can you make that happen? I can. Show me how. So, so the jacks are these, these are half jacks. See those little designs? And they that, actually look mm -hmm. like the little jacks that you play yes. with as a child, right? right? And we designed those because they go very well with the floor de lis. In fact, the jack is made from this little thing four times. See there the you go. Bottom? Yeah. So it goes perfectly. right. It it goes in design with it really well. So now what I'm going to do is. So would you like the floor de lis to be blue? Yes, we're going to do blue and a different color on the background. I think we'll do brown on the background. And okay. for you guys at home, the reason why we're doing that is because blue is very camera friendly. Yes. And it's allowing you to see all the details and the intricate workings of the molds. This may not necessarily be a color combination you would choose for your cake, but if we did it in all white or ivory or a light color, you wouldn't be able to see the detail. So we're choosing the colors that are camera friendly, but of course you can adapt it to whatever color, color combination that you need for your cake. You said that very well. Thank you. Would you like to run the roller over this? So, oh, wait, wait, wait. I should introduce. Okay, so as you can see, this mold is a multi-cavity mold, and it is actually these three floor de lis just by themselves. Just separate ones. Just separate floor exactly. de lis. Exactly. And what we're going to do is we are going to make these floor de lis separately. We're going to unmold them, and we're going to load them into the border mold first, and then come back with the and background back it. color. We're also going to replace the jacks with a different color than the backing that we're going to put into the border mold. Okay. So what we can do very quickly is we can, you know what? Let me make this a little thinner. Just all right. Now, when you are making these types of insertions into the mold, you really have to make sure that you are are hitting the thickness correctly. Because mm -hmm. if you make these too fat. The effect it's is... It's not going to fit when you put it back in the other yeah, one. Yeah, and it's not going to look as nice. So, you know, I don't think people believe me that it cuts that easy. You want to... You should. Put that. that under plastic so we don't dry out. Okay. And it's just real quick. Very, very light pressure, yeah. It's kind of fun, isn't it? Yeah, it really you is. You know, it's just... Yeah, that's no effort whatsoever. So just very quickly, you've just made three floor de -lis. Right. You know... And I'm just going to press them in to make sure. Okay. And then we've got a needle tool somewhere, right? There it is, hiding. Okay. And we're going to take these out. Okay, so. Again, you know what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn that edge. Edge down so and it'll you be know clean. What? You, you kind of get this really quick. See, and this multi-cavity mold is 
created in the same way as any other mold, that it's going to cut the pieces that you need and give you a lip to turn the edge. So there. You're done. We're right. done. Okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to unmold these, okay, just nice and gently. Oh, this is so pretty. And then I, I think you made these molds just for me because, you know, I live in New Orleans. <laughs> yeah. I love Fleur de Lis. I have Fleur de Lis everywhere in my house. We have about 11 or 14 of them here just on this set. I love Fleur de Lis, so I'm, I'm partial to this. So would you like to load these? And what I'll do is... Um, I'm going to hold one up just so the guys can okay. see it real, real close up, how pretty that is, and all the little detail, and how clean the edges came out without having to even trim it up. Beautiful. Now, this is the Jack's mold, okay? And, and so, I'm just putting these back in mm -hmm. the lace mold, and then I'll and give they you, fit perfectly in there. Now, for that Fleur de Lis mold, you're going to need the half jack, okay? right? And this mold makes three half jacks and three full jacks. And I think you used both of them, right? You used the full and the We're half. We're going to use fulls and mm -hmm. halves and your little Fleur de Lis, too. We're going to use uh, the, whole, the whole set. Okay, so there are your three half jacks and then you'd like to back that in brown and we're going to use brown yeah okay. just a light brown just so that they can see the two-tone idea mm -hmm. get a little bit of contrast and again a color that'll show up well on the camera so should we use shortening as an adhesive yes. between let's the grab two? a little shortening which okay. i have under here and a brush and while you're rolling that out i'm just going to take shortening on my brush and just put a little bit on the backs of these and this will be the adhesive that's going to hold the two pieces together so it's going to unmold as one piece. If you use water as your glue what happens is if you put too much it oozes out Yes. and then when you unmold the mold you got this colored syrup of the color of fondant, one of the two colors, and it messes up the piece and you basically have to start over. If shortening gets on the background color or it oozes out, no sweat just wipe it off and you're good to go. So this is a great, shortening is my favorite glue. Okay, so, so what we've done is we've loaded the mold with one color. And remember now, these windows are always going to go through the entire border. And now we're going to back this with another color. And so, this type of mold does a number of things. It, it greatly speeds up the production of a really cool border with the trimming blade and yeah, the it really does make it faster. Lip. But also it gives you this preloading capability where you can create a lot of different color combinations that you couldn't do before. You could do it before, but it would take well, forever. Well, you would have, have to hand cut right. every little piece out and that you want to replace, and that would be really labor intensive. Okay, so now what we're going to do is just take the windows out. That looks like something my dentist uses, that tool. I don't think that's a cake tool. I think that's a <laughs> dental tool. Am I right? It is. It is. It's called a wax carving tool. Oh, but, my God. I mean, your needle tool can work anything just to get at it. Just the sight of that's giving me the heebie-jeebies. I don't even want to see those tools. <laughs> Yeah, a dental visit isn't, you know, high on my list yeah. of fun things to do. Just that's don't pull sure. out a dental drill and I'll be okay. Okay, so we've cleaned up the edges and then we're just going to use the Same thing you know, and now it's, it's all going to come routine. out as one piece. And then we're going to see what type Ooh, of... I can't a... wait to see it. I'm going to clean up this little bit of mess here. Okay, and then we're just going to see what we get here. And it just basically falls out. Look there how pretty go. that is. I personally like brown and blue together, and that's kind of a an in color right now, color combination. I'm going to hold it up so you guys can see. So, see, so you can make these great, you know, color combinations, and again, you have the windows. Right, so the background color of the fondant will show through, and right. we'll see and that. that. That could be a third color. Exactly, and we'll see that on the yeah, cake that I'm getting exactly ready to what show you. you. Yeah. Yes, so really brings some sophistication to, you know, cake decorating. I love that. I love that being able to do the two-tone. That's now, beautiful. On, now, on show the them your little Florida de mold, which is just a coordinating right. small Florida de that you can use well, for accents. Well, you know, we've got the full jacks, yeah. okay? 
And this, again, is an accent piece. It, it wouldn't be used to load into the fleur-de-lis mold. Right. This is just going to coordinate, and you'll see how we do it on our pattern on the cake. So it, it's, it's an accent. And then we also made mini fleur-de-lis, which I think you used very beautifully. I grab one for everybody to see. Little tiny fleur-de-lis, and it's the same pattern and configuration right. as the big one. So that you can put that with this border and really kind of get a, a general theme for the whole cake. Right. And the great thing about having the separate components is that, you know, you've got the basic design of this one, but mm -hmm. you can mix and match and alter your other components and come out with your own unique custom designs on your cake and you can vary it up. It doesn't have to be the same mold, the same pattern, the same look every time. You have a lot of flexibility in changing up your design. I couldn't have said it better myself. Because mm -hmm, that's exactly what I did. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so that basically is how the fleur-de-lis mold set goes. Okay. How, how it all comes together. and. It's and really great. And now that you've showed us how to do this, um, I wanted to, on my cake, do gold painting on the floor de lis. Mm, so I have yes. a little bit, just a tiny bit of an alteration in your process to show yes. how I did the, the gold painted uh, floor de lis on the background color. We are going to clean up, get the stuff we need to show you that. We'll be right back. When I saw Dominic's molds, I knew that I had to do a two-tone golden black painting. I just knew that it was going to make a stunning cake. So this is the motif that, we, that I used, and you can see that I used all the different parts of the set, the mini fleur-de-lis, the full jacks, and then we did the two-tone with the full lace border on the bottom, and we've painted all the, uh, the fleur-de-lis gold. Mm. Now, what I want to show you is kind of the, the technique that I discovered in doing this that makes that painting look a little bit easier. Now, what you could do is just mold the, the, the two-tone piece like you did in the blue and the brown, you could do that with white fleur-de-lis on the black and then just put it on your cake and then paint the fleur-de-lis gold once it's on the cake. Right. But it's very hard to do that and keep it clean and not get your gold going all over your, back, your black background. You have to have a really steady oh, hand sure. or if you don't get the gold all the way to the black, then you have a little bit of the white fondant showing through. Mm. So what I did was is I molded some of the fleur-de-lis in white in your separate mold, right. okay? And then just let those harden overnight so that they were firm, okay? Because we're gonna paint them gold and then put them in the two-tone mold. Oh. If I would have painted these while they were still soft, we would have just turned into sugar goop. Oh, because we're gonna use vodka and that would have combined with the soft fondant and the sugars would have just created a goo and it wouldn't have hardened. So I like to let these harden then we're going to paint them, then we have to let them dry, and then we put them back in the mold. So it's a couple of steps to the process, but it's worth it because you're going to get this really refined, beautiful, clean painting job. It okay? looks like a competition cake. Oh, thank you. All right, so let's move this to the side, and I'll just show you real quick how we, how we do the painting. All right, so I'll just grab one of these, and I'll grab a jack, too, just so they can see how I painted those. So I'm going to use my luster dust. And I've got a couple of combinations of gold here. They make all different colors of luster dust. And I just mix and match and play with little pieces until I get exactly the shade that I'm looking for. So I'm just going to use a little combination here of, I'm going to see if I can see it. This is African gold. We've got a little bit of super gold. And a little bit of Aztec gold, which is going to take a little bit of that brassy yellowness mm -hmm. out and give us just a tad of a, of a brown undertone. And that's going to richen it up. It's not going to make it look brown, but it's going to pull it away from that too yellowy, brassy look. Right. Okay? So you don't have to measure. Just play with it till you get the combination you want. But you want to make sure that you make enough paint to paint everything that you're going to need to paint. Because what happens if we run out of paint? <laughs> You'll never be able to get that color you'll never exactly again. match that color yeah. again and they won't look the same so make enough that you can paint everything and if you make too much and you don't use it all just let it sit in the cup the vodka is going to eventually eventually evaporate out and you'll be left just with the powdery dust you put a little label on it this is my custom gold color cap it up put it on your shelf and then you can use it another time for something else. I never thought all the vodka would evaporate out of it. And you're left with a new dust mixture. Exactly. It's your own custom It's your mix. own custom color. You don't have to throw it away. You don't have to waste it because dusts are expensive. You put it on the shelf and you've got it for something else. So if you make too much, you're not going to waste it and throw it away. 
All right? Very cool. So here is some vodka in my little paper cup here. Only bring out the big, the good stuff for you, Dominic, the paper cup. Oh, I'm, <laughs> I'm honored. <laughs> so we're just going to add a little bit of vodka at a time until we get the correct painting consistency. And what's the correct painting consistency? It kind of depends upon what you're painting and how much coverage you want to get. So that's why I always make a few little extras so that I can do little mm. dabs and check and see if it's the right consistency before I move on to the piece that I actually want to paint. So you guys out there always make some extras because number one, we're always going to break something. If it's, <laughs> if it's a dry piece, we're going to break it. So you want extras for breakage, especially me because I'm like a bull in the china shop. And you also want to have some little extra pieces that you can play with your colors and practice and coloration so that you got it down pat before you go to your final pieces that you want to do. So let me let the camera see this and just kind of see. It's thin like, I don't know what to compare that to. It's a, I would say it's a little bit thinner than what like liquid mercury would be. Liquid mercury. <laughs> <laughs> you know, if you break a thermometer yeah, and no. the mercury comes out, it's a little bit thinner than that. So let's just try it on a little piece and see how it's going to look. If you paint it on and it just kind of runs and you see a lot of white still underneath, then it's too thin. So what do you think of that? This is probably just about right <laughs> because as you can see as I'm dabbing it on yeah it's 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 flowing out a little it bit is. so that it settles but it's not so thin that it's just running off the floor to lee and leaving the white showing through my initial thought was it was thin but it settles and covers the whole thing it does and, and then you, you can actually see it evaporating and exactly it's perfect. and you also don't want to put it on too thick especially along these edges because if you do it's going to fill in these little bitty pearl dot marks on the edge, if it's too right. thick, it's going to settle in there and you will lose that detail. So you want to do it really thin along the edges. And another little trick when you're painting, when you mix it in your cup, it doesn't really dissolve totally 100%. It kind of just goes into solution and settles out. And then you stir it up and it goes into the solution and it settles out. It never really dissolves. So you have to constantly be mixing to keep it at the consistency you want. But the thing that's to your advantage is if you just let it sit there for a minute and you tilt it over, you'll see that this part over here is going to be really thin, but down here on this part, where some of the dust stayed behind, you'll get mm. a thicker paint. So you can, all, you can actually have two consistencies in the same little container. So what we're going to do is, I'm just brushing off my brush here because I've got a little bit of thick on there. Kind of like a painter's palette. I, you know? I guess. I don't paint, so I'm not sure if oh, they okay. do that too. <laughs> so I'm going to use the really thin liquidy stuff over here to paint the edges where the pearls oh, are. Oh, that's great. You hold that cup for me like that yes. if you don't mind. Thank okay. you. Okay, so I'm doing it really thin along these edges. Yeah, it goes right in there. Okay, because we don't want to fill in all those little details with dust and lose that pearl look that we've worked so hard to mm -hmm. achieve. You know, and, and I, I designed the look of these floor de lis and I really like that you're trying to retain those little pearls. Well, you know? that's just what makes our cakes, you know, go to the next level. And while you're here, because there's little pearls also on those inner circles, I'm not sure if the camera's picking that up, but while you're there, go ahead and paint the inside of that circle because you don't want any white floor de lis showing when you're finished, okay? So again, we'll just keep it really thin. Mm -hmm. Everywhere there's little pearls. You know that little opening? Yeah. In mold maker's terminology, we call it a window. Oh, okay. What did I call it? A little hole oh, thing? No, a hole. <laughs> no, I mean, I'm just, we call it. I have very technical terms for things, and it usually, <laughs> it usually ends with the word thingy. <laughs> I think whole thingy is good. It's the I, whole thingy. Yeah. Okay, so you see how just really thin along the edges there so that we don't lose our beautiful pearl detail. And now I'm just making sure that I'm getting the outer edge because we want to paint this all the way, the whole side, so that when that butts against the black background color that we're going to mold, there's no white floor de lis or no white fondant showing when we're done. Okay? Mm -hmm. And then what I do 
is you don't want to keep it sitting in this pool of paint that's here because it will adhere to that and make it hard to move. So while it's still wet, let's move it to mm. a clean spot. Okay. And we've kept the edge of that clean. Now, do you want me to give this a swirl? Now we can swirl it up and mix okay. it up a little bit. And we'll get a little bit thicker consistency mm -hmm. now because we've now mixed it right. up again. It'll be a little bit thicker to fill in the center of the floor de lis and you're going to see how, how easily it does that. Now, again, what we're going to do is just kind of dab and let it flow. I'm not going to paint in paint strokes because all we're going to get if we do that is streaks. Just load the brush with a little bit on the tip, dab and kind of coax it as far as you think it's going to go without, you know, breaking through and showing white. And just let it settle and fill in. And when it all dries, you're going to get a very smooth covered surface. It looks like you're putting too much on, but I can see it. It's just smoothing out. It just does. Like it you just said. settles. And mm -hmm. as the vodka evaporates, the dust kind of compacts down mm -hmm. and also goes into all those little grooves. And the detail will actually come out more after it's completely dry than what you first see right now. Any vodka? I mean, like, is there a proof you like? Um, I don't know. Whatever. What, does it say what proof? That's 80 proof and it works okay. fine. You don't want to go too high proof. Mm -hmm. I do not recommend using Everclear or like 151 right. because that evaporates too fast right. and you don't get the seal of the paint on the object. It would be almost like dry brushing it with a dry luster dust. You're just giving it a, 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 a dry dusting and it's just going to flake off. You're not going to get, it doesn't have enough time to adhere to the sugars in the fondant to create a paint. So while Everclear and high proof alcohol has many uses in cake decorating, and we do use it for other things, when we're painting, keep it at about 80 proof so that you get that good result. 80 proof means it's 40% alcohol. Okay. I'm glad you know that because I don't. You know all the science stuff. I just know what works. <laughs> well, when I went to chef school, I, I really got interested in all that, the, all those details. I just, I don't know why. They just took, you know, I remember them for some strange reason. So now it's fantastic. completely painted. You've got a completely opaque painted look. It's still wet and shiny wow. when it completely dries, and I'll show you one in a second. It's not going to have that wet look, and it's going to settle, and it's going to look. It's going to settle down into the grooves more, and it's going to look perfect. Okay. So while we're doing that, just let's just do one of the jacks, and I'll show you. It's basically the exact same thing. I'm just going to dab and let it flow, and I kind of have to hold it because this little bitty, these little bitty pieces want to just roll all over the place. And make sure you're getting it along the sides, too, all the way down to the board mm -hmm. so you don't have any white right. spots showing. And you see how I'm dabbing it and just letting it flow. And on these pieces, we don't care if it flows over the edge. We'll just move it to a clean spot, and that takes care of any oh, little overflow that you know, might be hanging up there. So over time, the, the vodka keeps evaporating, so you might have to add more yes. if you have if a big you, project. If you have a big project, you're absolutely right, and you're working for a long time, mm -hmm. your vodka will be evaporating from your paint, and your paint might get too thick for what you're trying to accomplish. Right. So you'll just need to add a little bit more vodka. But just keep in mind that a dot, a drop of vodka can, can make a huge difference between whether it's, whether it's the right consistency or it's not. It does not take much to go from the wrong consistency to the right consistency and vice versa. Okay, so you see how with my brush, now that I'm finishing it up, mm -hmm. just kind of moving it over to a clean spot because That's I don't great. want it sitting in this pool of paint because if you do, let's see if I have one over here that I can show you. Well, this one was actually on a paper towel. Here's a good example. I oh. painted this on a paper towel and I didn't move it. So not only did the paper towel stick to it, but you can see that little pool of luster dust in the middle of the jack that you don't want. Yes. However, all is not lost because just use your X-Acto knife and go in there and very gently clean it out. You just have to be careful because these are very fragile and they have a very narrow join there and, and they're going to break very easily. And I'd actually be surprised if I don't break this one. I know, but it looks good. Oh, it looks great. And it, we're, going, we're taking the extra mile here because we want these perfectly painted, pristine, beautiful pieces on our cake. So we're going to take those extra steps to make sure that it comes out perfect. 
But like I said, I'm rough. I break everything, so I have to make extras of everything. So you see now, just with a little bit of the X-Acto knife, we cleaned up the paper towel and the little bit of pooling that mm -hmm. was on there. Yes. Okay. Great. So that's how you paint. Let that dry absolutely completely, and it will depend upon where you live, your humidity level, how much liquid you had in your paint, as to how long it's going to take for it to be completely dry. I usually just do things in a day. One day I mold it and let it dry, the next day I paint it, then the next day I come back. So you do have to kind of plan ahead. It probably doesn't take a whole day for it to dry and you just test it. You know, you just do a little dab with your finger and as long as it's not coming off. So see now it's perfectly dry. Oh, we yeah. can rub it. I can put my hands on it. I'm going to be able to manipulate this, put it back in the mold, unmold it, touch it to put it on the cake and we have not ruined our beautiful gold painted surface. You know, to see that powder out of the little vial there, you would never think that you could make it such a nice coating like this. Right, and mm -hmm. that's what the vodka does. It does some little vodka re magic, <laughs> and <laughs> it, the sugars combine with the fondant and the whatever's in the luster dust in the mm -hmm. vodka, and it creates that paint and it makes that adhesion to the, to the piece so that you get that permanent paint. If you use a high proof alcohol, like I said, that alcohol is going to evaporate faster too fast for that adhesion to occur and you're not going to get a permanent paint. Okay? So now we've got all these dried pieces of our fleur-de-lis and our jacks and now we're going to mold a two-tone piece to put on our cake. All right? So we've got this. You what go ahead and load in the three pieces. Let's okay. just make sure I don't have any debris in the mold. Okay. And I'm going to let you mold, put in the three fleur-de-lis and the three have jacks. Sharon, you, you made these floor de lis the perfect thickness. Thank you. I had the perfect measuring bar on the inside of the, on the, inside of the, the mold. So now while you're doing that, I want you to load those in mm -hmm. and if you don't mind, I got a little bit of luster dust on this brush, but we're not going to worry about that. Me to put Give shortening? me a little bit of shortening on the back of all these pieces because that's okay. going to be the glue. Again, just like we did when you were demonstrating, that'll be the glue that's going to stick those to the black background color that we're going to use. And while you're doing that, I'll roll out my black piece. Okay. I did add a little bit of tylose to this black piece just like we did the other one so that it has enough stiffness to cooperate and yes, give us I a good result. Yes, I highly recommend that. Right, so I'm just needing it a little bit to freshen it up, and I don't think I'm going to need this big of a piece. It doesn't take much shortening, does it? I mean, you know, no. to, to get the adhesion. No, it doesn't. It's just, again, it's just going to create enough of the sugars to dissolve to, to give you the, the glue that you need. And you don't have to worry about that water oozing out and giving you that goopy oh, mess. Yeah. All right. And I'm going to use a lot of cornstarch as usual because I live in a very humid climate and everything sticks everywhere. Uh, do, not, do not worry about the cornstarch marks on this. This is all going to come off later. It's going to be taken care of, so don't worry about cornstarch marks on this. This, um, this jack dried a little cattywampum. Can oh, you want I, a can new I get one? another one? Sure. See if that one's any better. Yeah, I can tell that's perfect. If not that one, you can try a couple. So I'm going to go to a number three on my pasta roller. Everybody's pasta roller is a little bit different, so you'll have to kind of play with it and see what setting on your pasta roller is going to be the appropriate thickness for your mold. I'm going to go to number three, and I might go to number four. Actually, I'm going to cut a little piece and test it, just like you did earlier. Just put one in there and see if that's about right. You think that's right, or I should go one more thinner? Maybe, maybe one more thinner. All right, so we'll go to number four, and I know that this is too long, so let's get some of that extra off. Okay, again, don't worry about the ashiness on this. That's going to be fine. So you've got a nice, good, liberal amount of shortening on there. I do. We're going to put our black on, and we're going to do the same thing that you did earlier. That's going to make a great contrast. I'm just pushing down, but we've got to remember not to push too hard because we've got hard pieces of floor de mm -hmm. and jacks in there, and if I push too hard, yeah. crack, you hear that, that dreaded crack. Yeah, the silicone below it is soft. Right. And, it's, you know, it just... and it can only take so much pressure. So let's just do our rolling technique here very gently. Cut our fondant. And again, I'm being gentle because I don't want to put too much pressure and, and crack my pieces under there. 
It's just short, quick strokes. Right, just back and forth, little yep. quick motions, gives you the best cut rather than going mm -hmm. back and forth over the and whole thing. that silicone blade will just find its way right through it. It sure does. Okay, now I'm just going to clean up the edges. And the one thing that I'm not going to do in this case that you mm -hmm. do is do the press in with the side. Okay. Because I find when I do that, it pushes that black forward in okay. front of the gold floor to leave mm -hmm. and kind of messes up the look. So, so you're I just, just going to rub along the blade. I'm just making sure it's clean cut, but I don't want to put a lot of pressure mm -hmm. along the edge because it does make it squish out in front and that doesn't really look too great. And that probably does the same thing, right? Oh, Taking I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm just joking. You didn't get me. I'm telling you, I'm dangerous with the blades. I'm cutting myself or somebody else if they're in the vicinity. Okay. And then to unmold it, the weight of these pieces is just going to really help it come out. And then you can see how it just kind of fell out. That is fantastic. Now look how beautiful that piece looks. Okay. Now, what I would do is, before I transfer that to the cake, mm -hmm. to the cake, I want my, my black fondant to stiffen up even more so that when I transfer it, it is not going to stretch and distort and tear, mm -hmm. but in the interest of time, we're just going to go for it and put it okay. on the cake. Okay? So, let's, get this out of the let's way. change places. Yeah, that's right. a good idea. All right. So, I'm going to tell you a little bit why I decided to do the pattern this way. Okay. When I first started to design this cake, I started at one end and I was just going to go all the way around like you would do with a round cake. But what happened was, because of the size of the square, the big fleur-de-lis were falling right on the corner. Okay. And it didn't look good with the fleur-de-lis wrapping around. Mm -hmm. So I decided that four across in the middle of each side was oh. the best look. Okay. So that's what we're going to do. So what we'll have the opportunity to do is show our viewers at home is how to patch a second piece into this. Okay. And then to also use a little ingenuity to make the corners fit when the mold is not exactly the right size right. of what piece you need. That's going to make more sense as we go along. So, yeah, you know, we design them for a round cake. Exactly. I mean, they certainly work on a square, but a square isn't the same as right. a round. So. And sometimes we have to work with odd shapes and sizes. Now, this is my wet one. I'm going to take a dry one here so I don't get my fingers all over everything. And you can measure this out if you want to be precise and know that your piece is going to be this many inches mm -hmm. long and measure it in the middle. But just for posterity, I'm not going to take all that time. I'm just going to eyeball it and slap it on there. Okay. <laughs> And since I'm on this side, I'm going to give you a little break from your shortening duties and just put it on myself this time. I like to give you the shortening work because you're so good at it. It's a very challenging task. And, and again, just put it anywhere because it doesn't matter. Whatever extra oozes out from behind or gets where he doesn't want it, don't want it, we'll wipe it off or it'll absorb later. Okay? So I'm going to be very careful and just pick this up and put it on. Okay? And now it's in place, and oh my goodness, I put it too far to the left. Just slide so it on So the shortening gives, gives you, you that, that flexibility, flexibility to just move wow. it over. Mm -hmm. And if you had used water, you would have a big old stain, a black oh, yes. stain back there. Right. So once you get it on, you can adjust it left or right and mm -hmm. get it exactly where you want it to be. Especially this cake, because you've got that color treatment. What, what do you call this? Scallop? scallop uh, this is a faux finish. A faux finish? I covered the cake in fondant and then did a faux finish with an ivory luster dust. Mm. And we teach a lot of those techniques in our Sugar Ed Productions videos. Yeah, they're great. Thank you. All right, so I'm just going to make sure that's right where I want it. Okay, so then just press it in and make sure that it's adhered to the cake. You know, when I want to design something new and I'm looking for inspiration, I watch your DVDs. Oh, thank you. That's because so nice to hear. Thank you. It's a, it's a video encyclopedia of cake decorating. Thank you. That is so kind. I appreciate that. So now we've got to put one more here. Mm -hmm. And I have one sitting around here somewhere that I already molded. Is that There it is on okay. the black background. Okay. So what I did was just mold one more on the black background. I didn't need the whole thing because we just need one to cut into that spot. Mm -hmm. Okay. So what we have to do now is we make sure that it's going to fit on this <coughs> side. And this was the last one in the mold. Okay. It was here. Right. This was the last one. So we know that this edge is already cut perfectly and it's going to fit right in to the pattern seamlessly. That is incredible. Then the only thing we're going to need to do is with an X-Acto knife 
just trim <laughs> this edge so that it looks clean and identical to the other side. So that's going to take about two seconds. You know, it's really cool to see what someone like you will do with the mold that I designed. Right. You know, you have no idea what people are going to do with it and its uses until people like you have at it, you know? And what I like to do is, you know, teach people alternative ways of using some of the tools that we have and using their imagination and changing things up and giving themselves versatility with their designs and the things that they can offer their customers. So we can take our tools and use them in different ways and, you know, get a lot of different products out of it. Because sometimes we just have to look at our, look at our tools and our toys and, and think about, you know, what other things can we do with them other than just the original intent that they were made for. And that's one of the things I wanted to show with this cake was We've got this beautiful mold set, which is working great, but we can also patch it a little right. bit to create our own unique design that's different yes. than just, you know, the run-of-the-mill lace pattern that you might see somewhere else. And the mold is still helping you do that. Absolutely. Because it, you know, gives yeah, you that Yeah, because it gives you those cuts right. right there. It just tells me where to cut, and it fits right in. And, you know, one thing that we hate as cake decorators is our seams showing, our joins. And this is great because I'm going to put it right in there and you're never going to tell that there's, there's a join or a seam there. It's going to fit in seamlessly. And you can go all the way around this cake and we'll never see where a seam was. So that's a, that's a joy to me because I like to have pretty, pretty seams. I just love the contrast on the cake. And then through the windows, you can see the exactly the uh, finish that you have on the cake you itself. You mean the little hole thingies? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yes. The little hole thingies, you can see your ivory <laughs> and your faux finish coming through. All right, so we've got the basic pattern on. I'm going to clean up a little bit now and get a couple of other supplies, and then we'll show you how to patch around the corner and then just finish off the rest of the jack design on the sides. Be right back. Okay, so Dominic, are you wondering how we're going to make that flush and make that corner look good and work with the rest of the pattern? I am. I'm really enjoying this. Okay, I'm glad you you're, are. You're I taking am too. my mold to new heights. I'm so. glad you're liking it. Now, we can't use your mold to patch this mm -hmm. because the section in between the floor de lis is not long enough to go all the way around this corner. So in this case, we've got to make our own patch. Okay. But I actually kind of like it because it gives a little bit of a yeah. modern flare on the corners, it's a little bit different than the rest of the pattern. But again, it's going to be totally seamless when we patch it in and we'll never be able to tell that it wasn't part of the original mold. So I've got some more of my black fondant with a little bit of Tylos in it, the same that we used for, mm -hmm. the, for the back of our double-sided piece. And then I've got my ribbon strip cutter set to the width that I need. And I just measured and decided how high it needed to be. And basically what I did was kept it at the same height as the top of these peaks in between. Oh. So that visually, as the eye goes across the cake, mm -hmm. the black line is all in one plane and it right. looks cohesive. Did you use the mold to set the gap? I did. Okay. I did. I actually just used this and yeah. set it over the mold. Or you could measure it mm. and yeah. just set this to match. So I'm just going to roll a piece. So that's adjustable. You this can is adjustable. You take the screw off oh. and you move the little pieces in between and you can customize the width to whatever you want. I want this. I sell those. <laughs> oh. So I can go to Sugar Red Production and get this nifty little tool. You sure can. It's called like a ribbon it. strip cutter. I really like this tool. <laughs> In the pocket it goes. I'll put that on your bill. Okay. <laughs> so we want this edge to fit in there. So what I'm going to do is take one of the, the floor de lis that are molded and dried, and I'm going to put that right on the edge mm. and just use that as a template to cut out this side, cool. just go right against it, all right, and now this piece is cut pretty much mm -hmm. to match that. Again, our magic glue, a little bit in there, okay, and then if I did this right, this is going to slip right into place there, and sometimes it doesn't, it just is a little bit not quite cut out enough there to fit, so I'm just going to open my hole a little bit more. And I think that's because this floor de lis is a little bit bigger because it has the black backing. Mm -hmm. So yes. you have to just cut that opening a little bit wider. So just slip it in until it fits, and it's not going to fit perfectly at first, but you just coax it with your fingers because it's still soft and malleable. Oh, yeah. I'm trying to not get my hand in the Seamless. way. That's and see, great. it just works right into. Right. 
the other pieces and it just looks like it was molded that way. Mm. Now this is absolutely too long so I'm going to cut off this extra so I'm not fooling around with a lot of excess and then we're just going to wrap it around. Now we can't do that on this side because it's on the cake and it would have been really hard to figure out how long it needed to be and right. cut the two ends mm -hmm. off the cake. You would, you would drive yourself crazy trying to figure that out. So I'm just going to push it until I see the outline and then I'm just going to use my knife to cut along there to make it fit. And again we can coax it a little bit with our finger if it's not a hundred percent fit. And see I'm going to need to stretch it a little bit mm -hmm. and get my palette knife. We're just going to pull it ever so slightly and then just stretch it until it fits. and it's still soft enough that it's going to go where you coax it to go. See? Oh yeah, that's very clean. And then you can take your little brush with your shortening on it and just kind of brush it down and buffer it down just a little bit so that it's flush and flat and even with the fleur-de-lis on either side of it. So now you've created a perfect patch, all right? It's wonderful. Not difficult to do. So let's just go ahead and finish putting our little bit of pattern on here. Mm -hmm. And what I've done was I used the full jacks, let them dry, and painted them. And then we're just going to continue this pattern along here. What you can do is give me a little bit of shortening on the back of these so I can finish. Okay. And then I'll put a little bit on the back of these half jacks. Now if you don't feel 100% secure using shortening for these pieces that are going to hang on the side, you can use melted chocolate or your royal icing if you feel like this isn't going to give you quite the hold that you want. And probably I would use either of those two, but for demonstration we're just going to use shortening today. So here I want to continue the pattern of the half jacks down at the bottom. So we're just going to put one there. Dominic's hogging all the glue over here. Did you, did you hog the glue in kindergarten? I knew somebody who ate the glue in kindergarten. <laughs> he didn't last long. So, and see, a little bit of shortening oozing out behind, just take your brush and you can get that off. And that kind of cleans up, you know, any seams or... It you know, cleans up any putting, seams yeah. and also any dryness or ashiness you have from mm -hmm. using the cornstarch and the tylos. That shortening cleans it all up. It makes it a little bit shiny when you first do it, but it's not going to stay that shiny. It's going gonna, it's gonna to subdue. Now, I just have to make sure you gave me enough that this is going to stick. I actually think we need a little bit oh, okay. fatter piece in the middle so it'll all stick right. to the cake. Now, I would actually measure these and make sure I'm getting these precisely in a line across, but we're just going to go for it eyeball method right now. I think the saints are going to call you as a result of this video. <laughs> Maybe they'll hire me to make their... Yes. Oh, see, I told you if you could break one, well, I'm going to break got, it. We've got more. And we need just one more to finish that. Oops. <laughs> all right, all right. Got to be, got to be. Do you want just a dollop in? Just a little thing? glob in the middle, yeah. Okay. And some of these may actually be a little soft and not actually be completely dry yet. That could be part of the reason why they're breaking. And can you hand me that little bitty brush over there? But I want to make sure there's no gold on that. Is there gold on there? It, no, that's good. So what I'm doing is, is just taking this clean brush and just going in between and getting all the extra shortening off. And you see how the shortening is not messing up my gold paint? Me yeah. brushing it mm -hmm. is not messing up my gold paint. Because there's no water in it. It's not messing up my faux finish. It's doing no damage whatsoever. So Done. there you have that side. Yes. And here's the back. And mm -hmm. when we get off camera, I'll finish that edge. Mm -hmm. And then just to show you how we did these in the middle, same thing, just glue them on. And then I just want to show these adorable little tiny baby floor de -lis that I love. And I'm probably not getting this measurement exactly right because I'm kind of working sideways here.
And the same thing with chocolate or royal icing, if you use that as your glue and it oozed out, if you get it with a clean brush right away, as soon as you put it on, it'll clean right off and come mm -hmm. right off without, without messing up your, your work. All right, and then if for some reason, if you wouldn't mind handing me the gold paint. Okay. If for some reason, in handling things or you get your pieces in place and you notice that you didn't either paint it completely or you've got a little bit of white shining through, you can still go back and touch it up with a little bit of gold point paint and it's still going to meld in. Now you got to make sure that your paint is not so thin that it's going to drip down and mess everything up. So you want to make sure you're getting a thick enough solution so that where you dab it, mm -hmm. it's just going to stay put. But let's say for instance, you know, I scraped it and I lost a little bit of right. gold and you just can touch it up mm -hmm. and it'll just meld right in. And that's been sitting for a while, so you figure it's thicker, right? It, it is mean, a thicker is. thicker area and right. Because right. the vodka's evaporating. Exactly. Off. You just want to make sure you're not putting it where it's so thin it's gonna run down and, and mess up your work. So any little spots where you might see a little white coming through or you nicked it or you can always go back and touch it up after it's on the cake and it's going to blend in perfectly. It looks fantastic. I think it looks great. It really does. I love the molds. I love the ability to do the two-tone. And I love the little window thingy so I can see the faux finish coming out behind the cake. The whole cake concept, it's just incredible. So now that we've got this stunning cake, we just have to finish it off. We need some kind of topper. And I think it calls for a beautiful gold flower. And I'm going to show you a way to do that really quick, really easy with stunning results. We'll be right back. Okay, Sharon, got a great looking cake. We do. Absolutely beautiful. It is. But it needs to have that finishing touch. All right. I, I, it needs some magic. I know you got something I up do your have something for you. Let's do it. Lay it on me. All right, and it's quick and easy, and it's something that you guys can do when you're in a pinch and you need that beautiful flower at the end. You don't have time to make your own gum paste flowers. You can find some really beautiful quality pre-made gum paste flowers that you can purchase. So what I've got here is a beautiful peony that I purchased. And the great thing is they come in white so you can color them however you mm. want. But we're going for this just dramatic metallic gold, black, and ivory. So we're going to use the same mustard dust that we painted with and we're going to spray paint ourselves a gorgeous metallic gold peony. Oh cool. Alright, so let's do it. Same thing, we're just going to mix our paint up. Again, make sure you mix enough so that you can do the whole flower. And I'm using basically the same colors that I used before. And it's going to take a lot of paint to cover this whole thing because we want to get a nice opaque finish. Right. So we're going to mix up a lot so that we know we have enough to do the whole flower. All right. Again, we're going to mix up with our vodka. That and is. we need this to be kind of on the thin side okay. because if the paint is too thick, it's going to clog the nozzle of mm -hmm. your airbrush. And that's that 80 proof Exactly. Vodka. And one thing I want to mention before I forget, if you don't have an airbrush or you don't want to be bothered with pulling it out, like sometimes I don't, they also make metallic sprays in the can that you can purchase at your cake decorating supply store and you could just do it with the spray can paint it's made for cake decorating and that's a quick and easy way to do it too if you don't want to use your airbrush but I'm going to go ahead and show you the airbrush method so you can see how it's pretty thin oh yes all right and we want it to be pretty thin like I said so that we don't clog up the tip of our airbrush since those dust particles don't completely dissolve they will clog in there and then you'll have to take your airbrush apart and clean it and that can be really frustrating so that looks like it's pretty thin and then usually I'll test a little bit and see how it looks and see if I have to adjust mm. it all right so we've got an airbrush here it's going to get kind of loud I'm mm -hmm. going to turn it on now did I hear you say you had a you're going to have Oops. an airbrush tutorial covering the basics yes in oh. our online membership site which is opening soon we're going to have all kind of uh, online videos in there and one of them will be airbrush basics where mm. you can learn all the ABCs of how to use your airbrush I know that airbrushing would be new to a lot of people yeah and it's a lot of fun because you yeah. can really do fabulous things with your cakes your flowers your figurines you can really do a lot with your with your cakes with airbrushing so let's go ahead and pour it in and I'm using a and of course, like I said, I always make a mess. I'm using a dual action airbrush here, so I need to press down and back on the trigger to make the air come out. Mm -hmm. And the compressor is going to turn off when I'm not pulling back on the 
nozzle so that we don't have too much uh, air, air pressure built up. So I've got this beautiful peony and I'm just going to open it up and I'm wearing gloves because it's going to get all over my hands and we're just going to open it wide open mm, wow. and just spray. That's fast. Very fast and it's probably going to take a couple of coats to get in there and get the whole thing covered. But you could spray one coat, wait about five minutes and come back. Now we're not going to unwire this whole flower and mm -hmm. do each petal separately right. because that defeats the purpose of this being a quick and easy solution. So you can just open them up and move them around because each, I'm going to let you hold that. No, you know what I'm going to let you do? You can fill my cup for me when it's empty. But you always want to swirl it or mix it so that every time it goes into the airbrush, it's mixed up so that we don't clog. Okay, and just do don't that. fill it all the way like I did and spill it. That's good. Okay. All right. So since each petal is individually wired, you can move them around and open them up and get in there. And then when it dries, you know, we'll just put it back into shape however we want it. Is that the fastest and easiest thing you've ever seen? I think it's amazing. And we just, I'm just have the, the airbrush going on full power. Mm -hmm. I'm pulling the trigger all the way back. You've got to get your airflow going full blast to push all those particles through. Because if not, it will clog. All right, need a little bit more. And when Let's you're painting something, when you're, when you're airbrushing, painting something like this opaque, it does go through a lot of uh, paint. So you need to make sure and if you get a little drip, just stab it off. You got to make sure you mix enough of your paint because you're going to go through a good bit. And come at your petals from every angle so that you know you're covering all the white spots. And you don't have to do it all in one session like I'm doing now. I'm right. going to do it all in one session just for the purposes of time. But like I said, you could do one good coating, let it dry for 10 or 15 minutes, and then just come back and keep adding until you get everything painted. It's amazing how smooth it's going on. That's know? the beauty of the airbrush. Mm -hmm. If you tried to paint this by hand, like we did our Fleur de Lis, it would take forever, but you would also really not get this beautiful painted finish that you get with the airbrush. The airbrush has the ability to just push it through in that ultra fine mist mm -hmm. that you can't get when you're painting. And we're, gonna do, we're going from monochromatic here. We want that dramatic, modern, sleek, yeah. Monochromatic look, so we're just painting everything gold. Yeah, it's really trying, starting to transform now. Right. Right, and what you've taken is something pre-made and just elevating it to a whole nother level. Very chic and totally customizing it for your cake. You know, these methods would appeal to a sophisticated clientele. You know, where you could really... How much, you know, what would you charge per slice on the cake that we're making? Well, that is very, very much driven by local market. Yeah. You know, just like anything else, just mm -hmm. like the housing market and everything else. Right. It depends upon, you know, what you can get locally. So you kind of have to research that and see what you can get in your area. Because what somebody could get $5 a serving right. for this cake in, in New York or Los Angeles, they could probably get 15 or 20 but this is way beyond what you're going to get in a typical, you know, supermarket. Oh, absolutely. Or, and this is, this, is, this custom, is art. This is custom work. This is art. And I sure hope that, you know, all our, all our friends out there that are watching this who are doing this as a business are definitely not undercharging for their hard work. You guys are worth getting paid for your talent and your skill and your time. And so a word of caution is, you don't want to put too many coats on right behind each other because it will pool and kind of drip. Mm, so just yeah. like any kind of spray painting, it's better to do it in a couple of coats and let it dry in between. But I'm pushing a little bit because I'm, I'm just trying to get it done on camera and let oh, everybody sure. see how great it looks so they can see the finished product. And anyway, I'm pretty much there. All right, and perfect timing because the airbrush is now out of, okay. out of color. So now what we need to do is let this completely dry. What I would do is just stick the stem in a piece of styrofoam or something and just let it completely dry, again, to where to the touch it's not rubbing off. Mm -hmm. And then we will be able to reshape it into the shape that we want to put it on our cake. Very cool. So that was just a quick, easy way to make some fabulous flowers. I think it looks much better gold. I love the gold. Yeah. You ready to put it all together? Yeah, I can't wait. All right, let's do it.
All right, so I've got two beautiful flowers here that are completely dry. You can see I can touch it now. Mm -hmm. And we're not messing it up. And we're just going to put them on the cake. We're going to use, since these are so big and effective, we're just going to put two on here. One on the ledge. You can see how it kind of offset this cake to the side sure. to make a little space there to fit our big peony. So I've got oh, to great. change the, uh, turn it around here a little bit. Okay. Just so that I can see, you know, where it's going to go. So, oh, that's and I would glue that in place with mm -hmm. a little bit of uh, royal icing or melted chocolate, but we're just going to put it in place just like this, just for, for wow, right now. Wow, and then now. you're going to put one right on Right, we're going to put one on top too, and you can just play with it and get the configuration that you want. And I'll just give our viewers here just a little like designing tip. Since we've got this one on this edge kind of looking to the left, we don't want this one to be exactly matchy-matchy like that. If we put this big one tilted like that, it's too symmetrical going in the same direction. Mm -hmm. So we want this one to slightly tilt a little bit either forward or in the other direction and it's going to have a more correct floral arrangement look if that's, if that's a word. And we're also not going to go way back here. This right. one's on the edge, so this one needs to be ah, on the edge too. Okay. Now I'm going to turn it to me just to make sure I've got it tweaked exactly the you way know, that I want it. It's amazing the addition of two objects, just two flowers, and what it does to that cake. And it's, it's, I think it's just really pretty because we've kind of got a, I don't want to say a monochromatic thing going. Mm -hmm. We've got somewhat monochromatic with the gold tones, but with the ivory and then just that pop of black, yes. you can just make a really striking, striking cake. And nothing that we did here was overly difficult. I don't think so, but we achieved classic style. I think it's gorgeous. Sophisticated, incredible. I, I really think. had a good time working with you today. I did too. And I'm really excited about your new molds, and I really had a good time learning about them and working with them. And if you guys want to learn all about Dominic's new innovative line, please go to MarvelousMolds.com. And if you want to learn how to make incredible cakes like this, or you're a beginner and you need a good place to start, go to SugarEdProductions.com. Again, thank you for joining us. We'll see you next time.